Hopefully you don't need a cat spa too often, but as a homeowner, you probably will. I'm going to cover which tools I think are absolutely vital and critical that you need to have for finishing your own basement and to get professional results. When it comes to finishing your basement, the number one on my list is lighting. We have these linkable LEDs that we just string up. You can string up to 50. They put off uh, very good light. So that's your option. Or they, the main benefit of these rocket lights is you can move them around very quickly. This is an M18. It just deploys, it has a telescoping LED, and you can see it puts up a very good quality of light. We actually use it quite a bit for filming. So first things first, before we continue with this video, we're gonna get some light going. We have these little carabiners, you can just set a nail or a screw in your joist. And as you can see, these lights are even positionable. So you can see just that alone, how much of a difference that makes to have adequate lighting in the space. Just makes your job easier, more enjoyable. So that's number one, have job site lighting. Now, number two is a nail gun. This is a battery powered Milwaukee. Uh, you can simply use a pneumatic, but to be efficient and do a proper job, you need to invest in a nail gun. I particularly like the 21 degree full head framing nails. Um, some guys like the 28 degree wire weld. Those have clipped heads so they don't have the holding power, but it allows you to hold a lot more nails um, in a steeper degree than reference to a 21 degree. Number three will be an impact. Now you can screw all your framing together. You don't want to buy a nail gun, but just with the efficiency, uh, if you are going to use uh, impact and screw all your framing members together, I recommend that you are going to want to use structural screws. We like GRK number 10s for framing and have had great luck with, uh, with those. Cross line level laser. Uh, these are really, really nice. There's a few things you can use them for. So the level line laser works really great for plumbing up walls. Um, especially like exterior walls. If you can shoot an entire wall, both giving you a plumb line on the floor and on the ceiling. So that saves you um, from having to chalk a line, which is nice. That way you can just work your way along and plumb your wall as you go. The next tool we have here is a rotary hammer. We like to set tap cons versus a ram set. For your masonry nails, we just feel like tap cons hold better. Um, if you're using a ram set, make sure you're using adhesives on your bottom plate. Those just don't tend to hold very well, especially if you're going into some an older home. That concrete is cured. Typically a ram set just blows things apart. In this same vein of buying a rotary hammer, just because of the finish level of the job is that much higher and they're very useful both for demo work. You can put a chipping hammer on this and if you have to demo tile or some concrete, it's just a really handy, handy tool. Or backsplash, that, this works really well for backsplash. But when it comes to anchoring your bottom plate using adhesive, love the polyurethane construction adhesive. This is great stuff brand. Highly recommend investing $60 in the gun. The money you save by running this stuff, um, one tube, this foam is 13 tubes of traditional adhesive. Works really great for your bottom plates. This adhesive speeds up drywall considerably. Um, you don't have to worry about squeezing a traditional caulk gun. Save a lot of time, especially on your ceiling joist. Another benefit of using this adhesive is it stays on your ceiling joist where it won't be falling down on top of you. Last but not least, a circular saw. When it comes to framing your basement, a circular saw, you can't beat it. Uh, some people like a miter saw if they're not as comfortable with the circular saw, but typically if you see any framing crew, they'll be using a circular saw. And we can't speak highly enough of the Makita 
Right now, Home Depot has a heck of a sale where you buy the saw and you get two five amp hour batteries for free. So if, if you're in the market for a circular saw, we've reviewed a couple of them. This is still our go-to, our favorite. And last but not least, a finish nailer. So you're gonna want an 18 gauge to finish all your trim. This is a battery powered Milwaukee nailer. Um, you can buy pneumatic, but the two main sizes you are going to want to have is an 18 for all your trim and base, and then a 15 gauge to hang your doors. So when it comes to finishing a basement, I would recommend as a homeowner, you should buy yourself a tool belt, um, even just a cheaper one. You are just so much more efficient when you're marking and measuring uh, with the tool belt. Primarily, you know, these are the things you use most frequently. So as long as you can carry a speed square tape pencil on you, I mean, that increases productivity a lot. Tools to keep on your person, a good carpenter's knife or utility knife, your framing hammer, a torpedo level is nice for when you're building bulkheads. Hopefully you don't need a cat spa too often, but as a homeowner, you probably will. You will need a good chalk line when you're snapping your lines for your plates, um, your long runs. When you're doing drywall, making your cuts, you're gonna wanna have two colors, red for your lines, and then blue for when you're cutting your drywall. I hope that video helps. Um, I may have forgot some tools in there when it revolves around drywall but this is just a general overall finish in your basement. Things that came to mind that I think as a homeowner, you should have on hand if you're gonna tackle finishing your basement. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. And as always, keep hammering.